Where to start? We have been very busy here at Stackbit. I feel like I say that in every video, but we really have been working on a lot of things that I'm excited to share with you today. Let's just dive right into it. One of the things that I've been personally looking forward to is the publishing granularity, specifically being able to publish now individual objects. As you know, we can already publish individual pages and recently we released that you can publish individual objects. So individual objects can be selected and published without publishing the entire page. For example, you can publish changes to an author object without publishing changes to a blog post. This is a great way for your teams to be able to move quickly and not have to compromise publishing an entire page of content if some of it's not ready yet. Our developer experience engineer Alad recently built a full-fledged portfolio website with Next.js, Tailwind, and the Git content source. The purpose of this code base is to really show how to apply annotations at scale. When you're in the visual editor and your content editors or marketers want to make changes, when they hover over a component and they can make pages directly on the glass, that is thanks to annotations. This is a great project and code repository to reference if you are looking for examples in how to successfully implement annotations. We also recently released a new container hook. The container runs through a series of tasks to get your frameworks up and running. One of the new hooks that we introduced is install command and this will replace Stackbit's default installation action. I also linked the docs down below so you can learn how to implement this. Hey Stackbit community, Sean here with an exciting announcement. We have officially released our Git CMS CSI module. And what this means is you can now define all of your content sources, including file-based content or Git CMS content, in the same way using this content sources property. So what I'm looking at here is I'm under the configuration reference on the content sources page and all content sources now get defined through this content sources property, which is an array, which means you can bring multiple sources. So one of the biggest changes and biggest benefits to doing this aside from consistency and tightening up our configuration is that you can use file-based content alongside any other content source. This can be hugely powerful for either supplementing content coming from external places or even adding external sources to a site that is mostly using Git CMS. As a result of this change, we've been able to deprecate a number of lingering properties that were mostly revolving around the use of file-based content. So these have all gone away and some of them have been adopted into the usage for the new Git content source. And we have a document for that. So if you go over to the integration section and down to content sources, you'll see a Git CMS page now. And this is going to explain the basic usage along with the options. Now the options are continuing to change as we're exploring different uses, but the base level configuration, what you should need on a majority of sites is unlikely to change because those, those core properties are very similar to the ones that we had at the top level of the configuration object previously. So today it looks something like this. You would define your, within your stack bit configuration, you would bring in, well, first you would install stackbit slash CM, CMS git, and then you would import git content source, and then you would define the properties that you want to define. So you notice we now have a root path property, assets became assets config. And so you want to pay attention to some of those small changes, but for the most part, they're very similar. And we're also now defining the entire schema within this options object. And this is very intentional because every content source really should bring its own schema. And when it comes to Git CMS content, it's your responsibility to form the shape of that content because otherwise Stackbit has no idea what that content should, what, what the shape of that content should be, how to enforce it and how to validate against that. Now, as you look to either migrate or adopt this new approach, my recommendation is that you use TypeScript specifically for your Stackbit configuration and your schema definition. Even if you're not using TypeScript in the rest of your project, it can be really helpful. It can be really helpful because you can introspect options objects and know which properties are available to you. And you'll immediately know if there's going to be a problem with the way that you have defined your schema because there are a few changes in here. For example, type used to be able to infer if you had an object type, 
That was the default. Now you have to specify type or we have a problem. File path is relative to the root of the project and the root of the project is defined by root path. So there are just some small changes, but if you keep your StackBit libraries up to date and use TypeScript, then you know you will be in sync with the StackBit application. So give it a try, give us some feedback, and I hope you enjoy it. Lastly, this video would not be complete if I didn't highlight or share with you about the lives that myself and our developer experience engineer, Sean, have been doing once a week. We go live every Wednesday and we talk about really interesting topics. I might be biased, but I think they're interesting. For example, this past week we spoke about if and how could you use on your team Notion as a CMS? What would that look like? Sean shared with us a demo that he has built using Notion as a content source, how he implemented in the code, and what it would look like if we added StackBit to this project. It was a really interesting live, uh, a really good candid conversation. The week before we dove into OpenAI's API, I was going through the OpenAI API with Sean and sharing with him my experience using it, what possibilities it brings and so much more. Once again, this is every Wednesday at 1 p.m., but if you aren't able to join us live, make sure to go back and watch previous episodes. All right, we'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone.